woke up every morning and I told you, you sucked at what you did. Well, make no mistake, the things that he is like alluding to there are, are actual things that happened. Tua Tonga Bailoa, who I was with, Brian Flores, same New England way. He was broken from Brian Flores, the way that he treated him, the way that he coached him. That you don't belong doing what you do, that you shouldn't be here. You have someone that doesn't believe in you and you see how you are. Then you have someone that does believe in you and then you can see the growth there. Vikings defensive coordinator Brian Flores nearly destroyed Tua. We've got a juicy bombshell confession coming right from Tua's own mouth about Brian Flores' coaching style and how belittling his quarterback, you know, didn't work. You suck and you hear it more and more, you start to actually believe that. This was a massive story. We had everyone talking about it. ESPN, Tom Brady, Shannon Sharp, and now me, Brandon Perna, AKA Football Jesus. What I wanted to do today is get to how I think this actually helped both Brian Flores and Tua. And like many Belichickian disciples, Flores failed as a head coach, even though he actually had a winning record in two of his three seasons in Miami. While he coached a hell of a defense, he had no clue how to develop his quarterback, and that's kind of important. Tua was delivered Mike McDaniel straight from heaven, and we watched just how important a head coach is for the QB in the NFL. I think Brian Flores needed to hear this, and Tua did him a huge favor that may help Flores get another shot at head coaching. The truth is, Tua's right. And Tom Brady's take on this situation is wrong because Tom's the exception to the rule. And you can't be you know, so have your ego so big that, you know, any criticism is going to, you know, lessen your confidence. And I think Brian Flores was 100% wrong in his approach with Tua, but I also don't believe we need to demonize Flores or try to discredit what he's achieved in the NFL. And I think if anyone would agree with that, it would actually be Tua. <gasps> If you like football, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I will have updates for Patreon and YouTube members for our fantasy football leagues at the end of this episode. So stick around for that. And today's episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. In my code, that's good. Look, Urinating Tree and I are launching another contest on Underdog. We did one last week and it filled up in hours. It filled up so quickly that Underdog wanted us to do another one. So when you sign up, please, God, use my code, that's good, so Underdog knows I sent you. And Broncos fans, I've got a Cortland Sutton special for week one of the NFL season. The only way to get this Cortland Sutton special is with my code, that's good. Brian Flores spent 15 years coaching with the Patriots. He started as a scouting assistant, worked his way up to linebackers coach slash defensive play caller in 2018, which set him up to land the Dolphins' vacant head coaching job. Miami had just fired Adam Gase, jettisoned Ryan Tannehill, and were in a limbo year with Ryan Fitzpatrick and took a flyer on Josh Rosen, who got three starts at QB. I would say Ariel, I, I like, I enjoy the ocean. Poor Josh Rosen got axed after being a first round pick in Arizona after one season, and then was sent to QB whisperer Brian Flores, where Flores would only whisper this. You suck. Yeah, jackass. Now the Dolphins, with Brian Fitzpatrick on the roster, had the fifth overall pick in the 2020 draft and needed a franchise QB. Miami had three picks in the first round. Miami took two at five, obviously. Reports at the time emerged, though, that Flores didn't want to take two at five. And we all assumed that meant that he wanted to take Justin Herbert, who went one pick later to the Chargers. Apparently, Flores was also very high on Jordan Love, wanted to draft him, who he could have had at, say, pick 18 instead of number 5. Regardless, it's clear Flores never wanted Tua, like at all. Thus, he made the decision to not coach him fairly? Maybe Flores thought the best way to coach a quarterback is to tell them that they suck. You 
suck yet, jackass, like Tua claims. But the craziest thing we see in the NFL is a coach who doesn't want a player and in turn doesn't give their best effort to, you know, coach them. It happens all the time, not just with Flores. Now in 2020, Tua got the nod to start week seven against the Rams, which should let you know how much Flores hated Tua. Yeah, go out there and start your career against Aaron Donald. Miami played the Jets the week before, who were terrible and winless. Tua didn't start there. They played the Cardinals the week after, but Flores circled the Rams for Tua's debut. Tua's intro into the lineup was also mangled as Flores benched him mid-game for Ryan Fitzpatrick multiple times. Not exactly what you see anyone else do in the league with their rookies, do ya? Now that said, Miami was 10-6 in 2020. Fitz Magic gave us the Braille Mary, and he was fun when he was on the field. He was better than Tua. Miami had the sixth best scoring defense in the league, so I get why Brian Flores would want to start Ryan Fitzpatrick over Tua. It was an unconventional approach, but it looked like Flores was coaching up kind of a ragtag team. So when Steven Ross fired Brian Flores following the 2021 season with a 9-8 record, we all thought he was crazy. That move was mixed in with the Tom Brady and Sean Payton tampering scandal and allegations that Miami was eventually docked two draft picks for. Tua battled injuries in 2021 while also dealing with Flores and multiple offensive coordinators and George Godsey and Eric Studisville. Then Miami hired Mike McDaniel in an offseason where there were 10 head coaching vacancies. Todd Bowles was promoted in Tampa, Josh McDaniels went to the Raiders, Dennis Allen elevated in New Orleans, Nathaniel Hackett in Denver, Kevin O'Connell in Minnesota, Brian Dable in New York, Doug Peterson in Jacksonville, Eberflus in Chicago, and Lovey Smith to the Texans. Mike was one of the last coaches hired. I loved Mike. But it felt like Miami kind of settled for him and didn't really have a plan. Then they added players Raheem Mostert, Taron Armstead, and Tyreek Hill. It's fair to note that their roster got quite a bit better after Flores departed, but also fair to remind everyone Mike McDaniel pushed for the Tyreek Hill trade, wanted Raheem Mostert, who he knew from San Francisco. Suddenly, Tua looked like a completely different QB. Suddenly, Mike McDaniel telling Tua this on his flight to Miami didn't seem corny. One thing I know about you is you have the amb ambition to be great. My job is to coach you to get all that greatness out of you. And it's gonna be fun, man. It's gonna be work, but I know you're not afraid of that. So um, th this, is, this is an awesome day for me. Um, and I'm damn sure gonna make sure that when you look back on this day, you're gonna be like, damn, that was one of the best days of my career too, okay? But I'll earn that from you. Week two that season, we watched with delight as Tua threw six touchdown passes and five coming in the second half to outduel Lamar Jackson in the Ravens in one of the wildest games of that season. Suddenly, Tua didn't look like a bust and Mike McDaniel was an offensive genius. And now we know the thing that was holding Tua back was a shitty head coach who didn't believe in him. Now, Tua made an appearance on Dan Lebitard's show this week and said this. If you woke up every morning and I told you, you sucked at what you did, that you don't belong doing what you do, that you shouldn't be here, that this guy should be here, that you haven't earned this right, and then you have somebody else come in and tell you, dude, you are the best fit for this. like." you are accurate, you are the best whatever, you are this, you are that. Like, how would it make you feel listening to one or the other? You see what I'm saying? Is Tua talking about Brian Flores or the dude from Full Metal Jacket? Hell, I like you. You can come over to my house and fuck my sister. <laughs> We have known there was trouble for quite some time in Miami, mainly from Jeff Darlington's reporting in 2021 and 2022. It felt like rumors at the time, but apparently it's all true. Flores either didn't actually like or respect Tua or thought the best way to motivate him was to tear him down. The way we watch Belichick do successfully in New England with Tom Brady. I don't care if Tom Brady is repeatedly told every single day, you ain't nothing. You a seventh or sixth round draft pick. That's why you were in the sixth round. Right. It starts to eat at you. The coach was going to be hard on me. I was going to accept the difficult coaching. Tua Tonga Bailoa, who I was with, Brian Flores, same New England way, 
he was broken from Brian Flores, the way that he treated him, the way that he coached him, and what happens? Mike McDaniel comes in, he restores his confidence, he gets it back, and now he's an MVP candidate. Now Flores didn't deny any of this when he spoke on the situation. I'm, I'm happy, genuinely happy, uh, genuinely, uh, genuinely happy for the success that Tua's had. Um, and I really wish him nothing but the best. He's talking about Deshaun Watson and Brian Flores' flirtations with that quarterback. When he's talking about being told that he sucks, those are real things that happen via text message from Flores to Tua. I think Tua, though, is trying to define the difference between tough coaching and treating a person like shit and how they are not the same. None of us want to be told we suck. That's basic human nature. And there's a difference between being told you suck on a play and this is how you fix it, and just feeling like a coach hates you. Tom Brady on the Pat McAfee show revealed he is definitely a boomer. I needed to hear it, and again, it motivated me, and there was a lot of players on our team that would see me get coached hard, and that they would say, okay, I gotta step my game up, because I don't wanna get yelled at. Tom's getting yelled at, I don't wanna get yelled at. Yeah. People are going to latch on to what Tom's saying because he's Tom Brady. And he's right about some of the things he said on the show. That's what accountability looks like. And, and you can't be, you know, so, have your ego so big that, you know, any criticism is gonna, you know, lessen your confidence. Criticism, especially in pro sports, shouldn't lessen your confidence, that's true. And you can accept difficult coaching, also true. I'm not sure if Tom actually listened to what Tua said though, because telling a guy he sucked isn't difficult coaching, it's bad coaching. I know it's the coaching because Tua's play got a billion times better after Mike McDaniel showed up. Tom, you were in an abusive relationship for far too long, buddy. If Tua wasn't better with Mike McDaniel, Tom might have a more powerful argument here. Some coaches have to coach hard, but they have to know the player that they talking to. Some don't, some don't respond well to that. But even with Tom, you gotta remember, he left New England because he got tired of Bill's bullshit. Robert Kraft was forced to choose between Bill or Tom. If anyone should understand that after a while you need a little sugar from your coach, it's Brady. What I will say, and this is true for all the truly great athletes, I'm talking about the top of the top, which is Brady, guys like Michael Jordan, Lance Armstrong, pick your elite of the elite. They're all fucked up in the head. They are sick. They are truly sick people. Winning is the most important thing to them and they will sacrifice everything to accomplish their goals. Those people can also be coached by sociopaths. Congrats, Tua, you're a normal dude. <laughs> this reminds me a lot of Vic Fangio's time in Denver. Fangio has never been accused of telling Drew Locke that he sucked, but Vic flat out refused to put any effort in developing his rookie quarterback. Fangio once wished Teddy Bridgewater a happy birthday in his press conference. Very pleased with Teddy's play. And today's Teddy's birthday, so wish him happy birthday. Cute, right? Well, he didn't wish Drew Locke a happy birthday, and they have the birthday on the same fucking day, guys. It's Drew Locke's birthday. It is Drew's. Fangio and Flores, both defensive guys, both suited to just coach the defense because neither wanted to be bothered by their quarterback you know, the most important piece on the team. And I think listening to Mike McDaniel is very refreshing and so much more in tune with how people actually want to be coached and learn. There's a lot of negative in, in, in the world and a lot of people telling you when you do stuff wrong. Um, for me, I think to really maximize someone, I think it's beneficial uh, for someone to be... Um, showing them a vision of their greatest self. I would say the last two years have been, have just been life-changing for me. Flores, to his credit, in his press conference insinuated that he hopes to grow and learn from this. A lot of reflecting and, you know, on, on the situation. And, you know, I think there's things that I could do better, for sure. And I've grown in that way. And I've tried to apply the things that I could do better and the things that I've learned, you know, over the last, you know, two, three years. I genuinely hope Flores does grow because I think he's a very good defensive coach. His defensive players stood by him after to his comments and I think genuinely like him right now. Just want to let him know we're behind him. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Good luck. Take off. <laughs> I am skeptical, though, because I heard Josh McDaniels say he learned from his mistakes in Denver. 
and then sucked ass in Las Vegas while being unanimously disliked by his players again. Players just unloaded on Josh McDaniels <laughs> from captain to captain. Once you buy into that Patriot way, I'm not sure you ever change. But he's not here to be a Belichick clone. Each coach has their own style. You suck, yeah, jackass. The Patriot way really only works, though, when you have Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, two sick fucks at the top. You can have a hard-ass, insane head coach as long as you have the right QB who fits that coaching mentality. I think Brady and Bill are the reason we have seen Flores fail, McDaniels fail, Matt Patricia fail, Joe Judge fail. They think they need to be like Bill to succeed. They think they need to treat players like shit to win because they that masochistic relationship worked with Tom and Bill. Andy Reid is nothing like Bill Belichick, except for his unmatched understanding of X's and O's. Good head coaches identify what their players, and specifically their quarterbacks, need to thrive in this league, and they get them that. And to think that Tua Tunga Bailoa isn't good with criticism is silly. The dude got to the NFL by coming up through Alabama with Nick Saban. I don't have an issue with a guy like Brian Flores taking over as a head coach and wanting to coach like a hard ass. What's dumb to me is the ego coaches have. It is so rampant in this sport. When something isn't working, it's the coach's job as a head coach to evolve and adapt to correct it. And Flores not being able to identify that his approach wasn't working was his downfall. This story though, hearing it directly from Tua could change that for him if another opportunity arises, but only if he proves he can actually evolve as a head coach, and more importantly, as a man. Ooh, that's my fucking TED talk. All $20 and Patreon YouTube members, we have three spots left in the uh, fantasy football leagues, the normal ESPN fantasy football leagues. That info is on the YouTube uh, community tab and in Patreon. There's one spot open in League 2 and two spots open in League 3. We had a, a double sign up, so that's why there's a, a spot open again in League 2. So if you want to play, uh, go check out the info in those two places and get in in the last three spots. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on the YouTubes. Make sure you come back uh, in the next day or two because we will have a Bo Nix episode dropping on That's Good Sports this week.